Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Okay, today I like to continue the discussion on filter design. Okay, before you actually come to this video, I strongly recommend you guys to go through the Part Thirty Two series discussion of filter design. On Part Thirty Two series discussion, okay, I have discussed how can we actually design a hairpin line band pass filter. So the key idea that we actually want to implement hairpin line is because we want the filter to be as compact as possible, which means that as small as possible. So this video is actually a continue on the part 32 series discussion. In this video, okay, I'm going to discuss how can we actually obtain the external quality factor QE and also the coupling coefficient M. Okay, for the hairpin line band pass filter. Okay, so this will be the objective of this video. This video, there are actually two parts. First part is I will discuss how can we actually extract the external quality factor QE. The second part will be how can we actually obtain the co coupling coefficient M. This will be the part 33 series discussion on filter design. So guys, if you're keen to know more about filter design, okay, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on filter design. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, okay, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome to ask me through the comment. Okay, before I continue, okay, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel okay, by like this video. Okay, please help me by press the like button now. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. As I mentioned earlier on, okay, there are actually two parts for this video. The first part, I'm going to discuss how can we actually extract or obtain the external quality factor QE. Okay, the couple resonator circuit they are very important for design of RF or microwave filter. Okay, in particular, the narrow band band pass filter that actually play a significant role in many applications. Okay, so in short, okay, if we can have a structure that is a couple resonator, okay, this will make the design smaller. And this couple resonator, in fact, play a very crucial role for the design of high frequency. And in particular, for example, if we want to have a narrow band, it will be easily fulfilled with a couple resonator. Okay, there is a general technique for designing couple resonator filter in the sense that it can be applied to any type of resonator despite its physical structure. Okay, so there are actually two typical input and output coupling structure. Okay, input output means that, for example, over here, this will be the input. Okay, so this will be the input. Okay, since the filter is symmetric, there will be another one on the right-hand side. That will be the output. So in short, when we actually mention about external quality factor, this implies to the input or the output coupling structure for the whole of microstrip resonator filter. So there are actually two types. The first type is actually the tap line. So this is actually the tap line. The second type is the couple line. Okay, so the tap line is because you can see that this is actually the feeding line, okay, which means that this will be the input. So they actually so-called connected to the resonator. So hence, this is what we call the tap line structure. As for the second type, this is what we call the couple line structure. Okay, so this is the feed line. Okay, so you can imagine this will be the input. You can see that there is a form of coupling over here. So therefore, this type we actually call the couple line structure. Okay, so I like to reiterate. Okay, so this mainly for input and output coupling structure, which means that they happen only on the input and also at the output stage. Okay, so let's go through the two types. Okay, so in a tap line coupling, okay, a 50 ohm feed line is typically connect directly to the input and output resonator. Okay, so this is the input and output resonator. As I mentioned earlier on, this will be the feed line. This is actually connect directly to the input and output resonator. Okay, with the coupling or external quality factor controlled by the tapping position T. Okay, so from this sentences, you know that this T actually control 
the coupling or the external quality factor QE. So where the position okay, for the fit line will be the key to determine okay, what will be the coupling okay, or the external quality factor. For instance, okay, the smaller the value of T, the closer the tap line is to the virtual ground of the resonator, leading to weaker coupling and a larger external quality factor. Okay, so this is a virtual ground, which means that the smaller the T, which means that the closer it is to the virtual ground. Okay, so when it's actually closer to the virtual ground, okay, this actually led to a weaker coupling, which on the other hand can okay, implement a larger external quality factor, which means that this QE will be larger. Okay, so basically this will be on a tap line coupling. As for the other type, which is called a coupling of the couple line structure, okay, they can be determined by the coupling gap and the line width. Okay, so over here, you can see that they actually determined by the G and also by the W. Okay, so typically, a smaller gap and narrow line result in a stronger input and output coupling or a smaller external quality factor of the resonator. So over here, you can see that if we want to have a stronger coupling, okay, the G need to be as small as possible and the width of this couple line need to be as small as possible. Then we will have a stronger input-output coupling. Okay, so once we have this stronger input and output coupling, okay, this actually led to the smaller external quality factor, which means that we actually have a smaller of QE. Okay, so early on the design, we are actually using this on the tap line coupling. So this video, I mainly will be focusing just on this tap line coupling, which is mentioned over here. Okay, so this is what we have okay, on this tap line. Okay, so how can we actually obtain the external quality factor QE here. So what we need to do is basically this will be our input. Okay, so this will be our input. Okay, so where we simulate, we will be basically put the simulator okay, port over here and we actually run this so-called with this structure here. So after we run this, we will be able to obtain both the magnitude of S11 and also the phase of S11. For this case here, when we actually deal with this external quality factor QE, we actually just need the phase. We can omit away the magnitude. Okay, as I mentioned, we just need to have the phase of S11. Okay, what we need to do is basically, you can see that this formula, okay, so this will be the cutoff frequency, or sorry, the center of the bandpass filter for this case here. Okay, so what is this value? This value is actually over here. Okay, so how can we actually get this value? You can see that this value is actually at plus 90 and also at the minus 90. The difference between the plus 90 and the minus 90 will give you this value, which also will be able us to obtain the external quality factor QE. Okay, so basically this graph, you can easily plot okay, by the simulator. Okay, so once you simulate, okay, you should be able to have this result. Okay, so whether you are using ADS, etc you should be able to get this result. Keep this in mind, okay, we only just want the phase, okay, we actually do not need the magnitude, we just need the phase of S11. Okay, so this is what we can actually get from the so-called ADS, for example, okay, a plot of the phase of S11 as a function of this, as you can see from here, okay, when the phase is plus minus 90, okay, the difference okay, actually will be the correspond value of this, Okay, which I will give you an example later on. Okay, so let's quickly go through the hairpin line filter design. Okay, so basically this is the problem statement that is given on the part 32 series discussion. The key thing is, I just want to put it here, is to share that the so-called center of the bandpass filter will be at 2 gigahertz. Okay, so let's do, okay, so how can we actually obtain the external coupling. Okay, so this will be the external quality factor QE. How can we actually do this? Okay, remember this is the final design of the hairpin bandpass filter. Okay, so as I mentioned, okay, this will be the input, this will be the output. Okay, so we just need to do the input. Okay, so basically this, I will extract out. Okay, so I will extract up and put it over here. Okay, so this is what I have shown it to you on the previous slide. So this is a virtual ground. 
Okay, so for this structure here, you can see that this actually look like this. Okay, so this will be the virtual ground. The virtual ground will be on the opening of the so-called of the couple resonator. Okay, so you can see that this is actually the virtual ground. Okay, so the T is actually at the center point of the feed line okay, to the virtual ground. So for this case here, this will be the center of the feed line okay, to the position of the virtual ground you actually have this T. Okay, so as I mentioned early on, this T will play a influential role okay, on the external quality factor QE. So this will be the first step here. So this will be the T. So the T, the location of the tap line will actually determine okay, the value of the external quality factor QE. Okay, so let's continue the discussion. So this is what I mentioned early on. Okay, we run a simulation. Okay, so we just need the phase. So we actually can get this. So this will be the formula. Okay, keep this in mind. Okay, what we need to do is, for example, let's say, okay, we actually obtain, let's say, uh, obtain the 7.5. Okay, let's say this will be the 7.5. We actually obtain the QE to have the value, let's say, around 5.9. Okay, so after that, okay, we need to shift this guy. Okay, let's say, to 7.0. So what happened here is basically you can see that I actually reduced from 4.7 to 4.2. So which means that now this length here total will be 7. Then I run the simulation and then I can easily calculate my external quality factor QE. Then from here, let's say for example, the value is 7. Then after I finish, I will be able to draw this line here. So this line is actually so-called the T, the location of the tap line okay as compared with reference to the external quality factor qe here okay so i hope it's clear so what you need to do is basically based on the simulation okay what you need to do is you shift the location of the input and up and also the output okay for this case here is mainly on the input you shift the location and you can actually see that for example you plot it at 8.5 8.0 7.5 7.0 and 6.5 Okay, basically by vary the location of the tap line, okay, you should be able to obtain the external quality factor QE. Okay, let me give you an example. How can we actually get the QE? Okay, for example, this is the simulation okay, that you actually obtain okay, uh, for the so-called input-output resonator. Okay, so keep this in mind. We only just want the 90 and the minus 90. So we just need to know the value. Let's say this plus 90, okay, I actually obtain the frequency, okay, which is around 2.47 gigahertz. Uh, sorry, gigahertz, yeah. So I can actually rewrite this as 2470 megahertz. Uh, this minus stands for lower lower side. Okay, so this will be the plus. Okay, so this will be the minus 90 here. So you actually obtain, okay, which is about 2534 megahertz. So if you look at the so-called simulation result, you will have more detail. Okay, over here, you probably a little bit do well how I actually get this number, but once you run the simulation, you actually can get quite accurate result, which is shown over here. Okay, so let's say just just uh, denote that the center of the bandpass filter is at 2502 megahertz. Okay, so in between these two here, how much will it be? So you should know that you will be using 2534 minus 2470 which give us 64 megahertz, megahertz here. So this value here, how can we actually obtain? So as I mentioned earlier on, the cutout frequency, or sorry, the center of the bandpass filter is actually 2502 megahertz. And this is actually 64 megahertz. So if you compute, okay, you actually can compute that this QE, okay, which is 39. So from there, you actually can plot the QE. So after that, you just need to move the position okay, of the tap line. Okay, you just need to move the position of that line and then you will calculate the QE. And based on the calculation of QE, you can imagine that you will be able to draw this graph. Okay, so basically, this is how I actually obtain the external quality factor QE for the hairpin line bandpass filter design. Okay, so before I continue okay, on the coupling coefficient, okay, so if you have learned something from this video, okay, please help by like this video. Again, okay, I like to encourage you guys to subscribe to this channel if you like the content and also turn on your notification bell. Okay, let's continue okay, on the coupling coefficient M here. 
Okay, so there are actually four possible type of coupling coefficient. Okay, but if you look at this is what we have designed for our hairpin line band pass filter, you can see that this actually look like this. Okay, so the opening here, the bottom here, so you can see that the opening here, the bottom is here. So our design is actually referenced on this. Okay, the rest they are not. You can see that they are facing each other, okay, or they facing away from each other, or they face the same so-called side. Okay, but for our case, okay, it's actually on this. Okay, as you can see that the final design of our hairpin band pass filter is actually based on this. Okay, so this video, I'm not going to discuss all the tedious mathematics proving. Okay, but over here, I just want to show you a simple technique. How can we actually obtain the coupling coefficient M? Okay, for this case here, okay, we assume that for this case, since this G1 and G2, they will be the same, and we don't have this offset. Okay, so since from here, you can see that they are level. So I assume these are actually the level also. So what we need to do is, again, okay, we need to do some simulation. Okay, so Early on, okay, you have this input, but for this case here, it's a coupling coefficient. So I don't have this input port. For this case here, okay, I will put them at the middle and I'll put this part two at the middle part portion here. And again, I will run a simulation okay, based on the coupling coefficient. Okay, so over here, you can see that there are actually two types of result okay, for this two port network here. So we have the magnitude, which is the solid line. We also have the face, which is the dotted line over here. So over here, for example, here, okay, I for this round here, for this coupling coefficient, okay, I will look at the magnitude. Okay, I will ignore the face. I will look at the magnitude. Over here, you can see that there are actually two so-called two bit at the magnitude. Okay, the first bit here, if you take a look on this reading, which is two five one three point three megahertz. So this is the first bit, okay, which is 2513.3 megahertz. As for the second bit here, if you draw a line, you can see that this is roughly about 2540.7 megahertz here. So how can we actually obtain the coupling coefficient M? Okay, so this is the formula. Okay, so from here, you can see that this is my FP2, which I got it, and this will be my FP1, okay, which is the so-called lower side, and this will be my upper side. And if you punch your calculator, okay, you should be able to obtain the coupling coefficient M as 0 0.01084. Okay, so basically, once I have this, okay, I will know the so-called the gap or the slot in between the resonator. Okay, then I will be able to plot. For this case here, for example, the S, which is 3, 3 mm here. Okay, so therefore, from here, I calculate that my M is actually equals to 0 0.01084. Okay, so therefore I have this. So later on, I shift this closer to 2.5. Okay, again, I run a simulation. Okay, I have two, this two bit, and based on that, I will actually calculate and obtain the answer. Okay, so basically this is how we obtain the coupling coefficient. Okay, let me give you some example in deep detail here. Okay, so this is what we have calculated on our hairpin line band pass filter. Okay, so as I mentioned here, the S actually will be this parameter. Okay, for example, I can put the S, let's say at one mm here. So I run the simulation. I should have this so-called magnitude here. So I have this two point here, okay, as my FP1 and also my FP2. And I use this equation, okay, I will be obtain my coupling coefficient m value for example for this case let's assume that is one one meter then i one mm sorry one mm then i will obtain my coupling coefficient here so next i will shift it to 0 0.8 the gap here 0 0.8 then again i will have these two at different location at different frequency okay so again i can also calculate my coupling coefficient then i will be able to successfully plot this coupling coefficient Okay, so with this, I like to end my discussion. Okay, over here, okay, I have discussed how can we actually obtain the external quality factor QE and also the coupling coefficient M for the hairpin line band pass filter. Okay, so with this, thank you so much. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.